upgrading the Kolga Titan Ape deck. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. Welcome to another deck upgrade video. This time I present to you one of the Magic Arena Starter Kit decks. I previously did the Veto deck. Go back to that video and watch it. It should be popping up over here somewhere, wherever it pops up or in the description. But this time I'm doing the Kolga Titan Ape deck. This is a mono green deck. I'm gonna upgrade this deck, make it way better than ever. There's two versions of this video. Of course, there's the public version that gives you a great upgrade for free, but then there is the paid version, the Patreon version, the one that you can unlock for $1, where you get an even better deck. Right now, we're going to go with a budget upgrade, so commons and uncommons. The full, the full deck list is down in the description below, totally for free, but if you then want to upgrade to the more powerful rare and mythic rare type of deck. That one's at the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. You unlock that for $1 plus all of the other millions, hundreds, dozens of uh, exclusive decks that I have over there on Patreon. I think it's worth it for $1. In any event, let's go look at the upgrade to this deck right now. All right, so switching over to the arena account, so it's great that you get the code to unlock this deck on Arena digitally. And I wish they would do this for every single product. I wish they had done it for the Brawl decks that they released at Throne of Eldraine and continue to do so. That's why you've got to tweet at them respectfully and tell them, please continue to put codes in these real products so that I can go play the digital product and tell my friends and family to play Magic and keep the company going but that's a deeper discussion for a later time. Let's talk about the upgrade. Now, this upgrade is going to make the deck into a much more powerful and fun to play brawl deck. Because if you're gonna do upgrades to these types of decks and you're planning on going on the ladder and gaining rank and so forth, you really have to play with the meta. And the meta is a thing that is always evolving. Smarter people than me are creating meta decks. I like to focus on brawl decks, fun decks, tribal decks, casual decks, where you can still flex your mind, your gameplay, rack up some wins and some fun. So this upgrade is going to be a brawl upgrade. Let's go check out the deck. All right, as you can see here, I've got the original unedited deck, which I can still do things with, like try to make it into a standard deck, a historic deck. Again, if you're going to play the ladder, this kind of an upgrade, you're really going to have to focus it into what's meta, and that's too much of a grind to keep up to date with, and someone's always going to have a better meta deck. We're going to focus instead on Brawl, which I think is one of the best ways to play Magic. It's a singleton format. You only need one of each card. You don't have to beat yourself up to get all the perfect wild cards. You can get a great challenge and a great game of Magic with Brawl. I've got two of them here. I've got the one I'm going to show you in this video, the, the free video, the budget upgrade in Artisan. So that's commons and uncommons. And I've got the big money upgrade right there, but that one is exclusive to the patrons. Go to the address right there on your screen. Don't delay. For one dollar, you unlock that deck, plus the veto deck, plus a Zakama deck. So many decks that I've got there at the Patreon for the exclusive members. And you unlock all of them for one dollar. I think it's totally worth it. But if you're on a budget, enjoy this free version of the deck upgrade, which is still going to do some great wins. All right, so the point of this deck is Kogla, the Titan Ape, a six casting cost 7-6 legendary creature ape. When it enters the battlefield, it attacks another creature of the opponent. Uh, so it just comes in and it just swipes at one of their creatures. Very Berserker-like. I love it. Whenever Kogla attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. So when you attack with Kogla, you destroy one of their precious enchantments or artifacts. They never see that coming. Once that happens, and they do that, a lot of times people rage quit because it's like, wow, you get a 7-6? It swatted my creature, and it also destroyed my enchantment or artifact? I quit. 
And lastly, pay one in a green. Return target human you control to its owner's hand, and Kogla gets indestructible until end of turn. So a lot going on. It's a big, dumb, fun green creature. That's what, that's what this color is all about. It's about big, dumb, fun green creatures to stomp your opponent. So the deck has been tuned to get you lots of mana quickly to then create lots of big creatures, stomp your opponent with some big chonkers, and even if the opponent doesn't quit as soon as it starts coming together, they will fall before the might of your critters. And that's what you should always have as a goal when you build any decks, not just brawl decks, but you should have a goal, a plan of what your deck is going to do, not just a pile of cards, although obviously you can play magic however you want, and a pile of fun cards is fun, but that really works when your opponent is on the same wavelength as you. I like to build brawl decks that are fun, synergistic, create a resonant experience. That is the true nature and spirit of Commander and Brawl, which is Commander Junior. If I'm building a vampire deck, it's all vampires. Why am I going to throw in a random zombie? A zombie's not a vampire. If I'm building a deck that focuses on big creatures in green, well, I'm going to do everything that I can to get that mana ramp so that I can get to the big creatures. And I hope you build decks like that as well. Synergistic, tribal, fun, it all works together. You're going to see you're going to have a better experience when playing instead of chasing the meta. Which, take it from me, I've, I'm a mythic player. It can be a grind. If you're not playing the meta decks, you're going to fail a lot. So when you're playing a little bit more fun, enhance the fun by playing cool tribal synergistic decks. Anyway, so here's what we're doing. Um, we have the complement of 26 lands. I have each of the different card styles here. So 26 lands. These starter decks oftentimes have too many lands if you're trying to play regular 60 card games but with brawl and commander you usually want more lands than you think for brawl you want 26 lands you don't want to miss land drops especially at the beginning of the game and even later when you want to do more things so 26 lands you also want to have mana ramp so these are either mana dorks which are creatures that then give you mana later mana rocks which are artifacts that do the same, or mana spells, which get you more lands faster than your opponent. One of the ways to do well in Brawl and Arena is to just get more resources than your opponent. The fair way to play Magic is one land at a time per turn, and you slowly build your resources to do big things. You do little things with a little bit of mana, you do big things with big amounts of mana. Well, if you get a little bit ahead of your opponent, if you've got more mana than your opponent, that's more good, bad grammar aside. So the way we do that is with some great mana rocks. We've got, of course, Arcane Signet. So turn two play, you play this. When it's back on your turn three, you've got at least three mana, probably four. You've got one more mana past your opponent to do the good stuff. Altar of the Pantheon, three mana, mana rock, tap it to add one color in your any color that you want of course you're, pretty, you're gonna pick green but you can pick blue if you want to mess with your opponent and if you have a god demigod or legendary enchantment you gain one life when you tap this plus it increases your devotion heraldic banner another three mana mana rock when this enters the battlefield pick a color green of course creatures you control get plus one plus zero if they're that color this is a mono green deck so of course everything will get one plus one, and then tap this to give you one green mana. And lastly, the spinning wheel. Another three mana, mana rock, tap it to add one color, and then five and a tap. This is why I like this mana rock compared to other three drops. You can tap your opponent's creature when they're about to attack you to have one less attacker, or you can tap their creature when you're going to attack to have one less blocker. So I like these mana rocks that I've chosen, these four. You could possibly take out the Altar of the Pantheon and instead put Mana Geode. It also gives you one mana of any color at a three drop, but it lets you scry and knowing the future is always better. So those are the four mana rocks to give me 30 mana sources in permanence to get to the good stuff. 
We've also got some mana dorks. These are creatures that also tap for mana. Now creatures are a little bit more susceptible to removal versus a mana rock. So that's why we've got a couple of each type. Mana rocks versus mana dorks. Starting off with the humble naturalist. I love the art on this little guy. Check out how he's nuzzling that little critter. So two mana, one and a green. You get a 1-3 human druid. Tap it to add one mana of any color. Spend it only to cast creature spells. So if you don't get your Arcane Signet turn 2, you might get the Naturalist turn 2, which then helps you bring more creatures faster. Elysian Caryatid, again 2 mana, this is a 1-1, one, one. it's a plant, tap it to add 1 color, or if you've got a big creature, a creature with power 4 or greater, it gives you 2 mana at a time. You're going to have plenty of big creatures, so this is going to give you 2 mana at a time instead of 1 many times. Woodland Mystic, 2 mana, 1-1, one, one. tap it to add 1 green. Amazing art, and again, more mana for the bigger stuff. Land of War Visionary, 3 mana for a 2-2, two, two, taps for TV green, but also when it enters, it draws you a card. More cards versus your opponent will keep you ahead of the game. Next up on the mana production, we've got Cultivate. These are the types of spells that let you go get lands, either directly to the battlefield or into your hand, so that then you have more lands guaranteed versus your opponent who might have missed a land drop. Cultivate, three mana sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic lands. Of course, you're gonna go get both. Reveal both of them, put one into the battlefield, tap and the other into your hand. So you've got the mana definitely guaranteed in your hand. It also thins your deck, one less land that you're gonna draw from your card so that you can draw the good stuff, plus you put one land on the battlefield. On turn three, you already have four mana compared to your opponent only having three mana. Vastwood Surge, 4 mana, it does the same thing, search your library for up to 2 basic lands, put them both onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. So for 4 mana, you can get those 2 lands, put them directly, instead of with Cultivate, you get 2, but keep 1, play 1, with 4, you do it like this. Now if you kick it for 8 mana in total, for more generic mana, if this spell was kicked, put 2 plus 1 counters on each creature you control. So even if you've got some of these humble little creatures, this 1-3 or this 1-1, one, one, this is becoming a 3-3, three, three, this is becoming a 3-5, and when you get to the big creatures like Kogla, this is going to be a 9-8 if you're able to kick the Vastwood Surge. Which you should be able to if you've been playing your mana on curve and doing some mana rocks and or mana dorks. And the last mana acceleration spell is the Beanstalk Giant. This is a creature but also has an adventure attached. So you can play the adventure part and then play the creature part, and you want to. You've got Fertile Footsteps, 3 mana sorcery. Search your library for a basic land, put it to the battlefield, untapped, and shuffle your library. So if you're on turn 3, you can play this right away, you drop your, your land. Later on, when you've got 7 in total, you get this Beanstalk Giant, which its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. So you're going to have 7 lands when you summon this. This is a 7-7. Seven, seven. So it doubles as a big creature plus mana ramp. Part of the reason you're also mana ramping is that you can play these great X creatures. Ivy Elemental, green plus X. Ivy Elemental enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters. So imagine having a bunch of mana, and this comes in as a 5-5, five, five, a 7-7, seven, seven, a 12-12, 12, 12, whatever for that X cost. So more mana gives you a bigger creature. Same thing with the Wildwood Scourge, the exact same thing. Green plus an X enters with plus one counters. But wait, whenever one or more plus one counters are put onto another non-Hydra creature you control, put another plus one on this. So this can grow as your other creatures grow with counters, and hey, we have a few ways to put counters on other creatures, which then also trigger the Scourge, and this Scourge is really going to wreck your opponent. So more creatures here. Yorvo, Lord of Gerenbrig. Three red mana, which will be completely easy to cast. It'll enter the battlefield with four plus one counters. So three mana for a 4-4, four, four, amazing. Whenever another green creature is put onto the battlefield under your control, put a plus one counter on Yorvo. Then if that creature's power is greater than Yorvo, put another plus one. Okay, so you're gonna be doing the counter dance right here to make the Scourge even bigger and bigger. Plus Yorvo is just gonna get bigger and bigger very easily. Bristling Boar, four mana for three. It cannot be blocked by more than one creature. Iron Scale Hydra, 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. If a creature would deal combat damage to the Hydra, prevent 
that damage and put a plus one counter. So you attack with a 5-5, five five. the opponent doesn't read it of course, they block, the damage bounces off, gives itself another counter, it becomes a 6-6. Six six. And again, those counters could be also helping your Wildwood Scourge. Affectionate Indrik, it's a 6 mana 4-4. Four four. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it fight another target creature you don't control. So it could do 4 damage right away to another creature of your opponent if you want. Perhaps the opponent finished blocking and it got weakened a little bit, then you summon the Indrik and do the final bit of damage affectionately. Colossal Dreadmaw, 6 mana, 6-6, six, six, Trample, Nuff said. Honey Mammoth, 6 mana for another 6-6. Six, six. When it enters the battlefield, you gain 4 life. Plus, I love that art. Warden of the Woods, 6 mana, 5-7, with Vigilance. Whenever Warden of the Woods becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw 2 cards. So let's say they got that 5-7 out, then they did like bubble snare on it or something to lock it down, you draw two cards off of that. Greater Sandworm, seven mana for a 7-7, seven, seven. cannot be blocked by creatures with power two or less, so they've got to block it with big creatures. If you're not going to get to this big creature very quickly, you can instead cycle it for two mana. Tree Shaker Chimera, seven mana, eight five, all creatures able to block Tree Shaker Chimera do so. So when this attacks, all of their creatures must block this, then you get to pick them off. And when this dies, draw three cards. And lastly, the biggest, baddest creature is the Titanox Rex. Eight mana for an 11-11 with Trample. If you're not able to pay nine mana, Instead, you could cycle it for two mana, and then you put a trample counter on one of your creatures. So Kogla may be commanding this brawl deck, but Titanox Rex is the one that is the alpha beast. A couple more creatures. We've got the Snare Spinner, two mana, one, three with reach. It'll block flyers. When it blocks a flyer, it becomes a three, three. So that's cool. Another creature here, just the Hyrax Tower Scout, three mana, three, three. When this enters the battlefield, untap target creature. And lastly, the Almighty Brushwag. I love this card. One green mana gets you a 1-1 one, one with Trample. But then later, you can pay four mana to give it plus three, plus three. And when you've got lots of mana, I could easily see you paying eight mana to give this plus six, plus six Trample. The Almighty Brushwag. Plus, I love the art on this. Look at all of the other creatures bowing at her presence. All right, let's talk about some uh, removal. How do we deal with the opponent with all of these creatures? Well, we're gonna have these various spells that bite or fight the opponent's creatures. Rabbit Bite, Sorcery, two mana, target creature you control, deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't. So this is a one-way bit of damage. You have a big creature, it then does its damage to their creature, probably wiping it out, or maybe after some sort of attacks and the creature is damaged, you finish it off with a rabid bite. Remember, it's sorcery speed. Don't try to do a combat trick with this. You instead want to think about ram through. That one's got instant speed, same two mana. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. So this is doing trample damage in an instant. It's rabid bite, but with trample. So if your 11-11 did a rabid bite onto their 1-1, all 11 damage is wasted on the 1-1. Instead, with the ram through, the 1 damage kills their 1-1, and then the rest of the 10 from the Titanox goes to the opponent. So ram through is pretty amazing. Hunter's Edge is similar. Four mana, put a plus one counter on target creature you control, then that creature deals damage equal to its power to another creature. So it's it's rapid bite, it's ram through, but with giving your own creature a plus one, plus one counter first. Also for four mana, out muscle with the most epic art ever. This guy is totally wrestling this bear. Put a plus one counter on target creature you control, then it fights target creature you don't. Now, this is different than the other ones where it's just your creature biting theirs. The mechanic is that your creature deals damage to them in a one-way bit of damage. Out muscle is symmetrical. They both deal damage to each other. However, if you adamant it, that means that if you pay green mana for the full cost, your creature gains indestructible. 
So you're going to easily be able to pay adamant cost for this. Your creature's going to get stronger. It's going to get indestructible. It's going to kill the other creature and then still attack. Let's say we did the damage to each other and your creature is at a 4-0 and it still lives indestructible. And then you can still attack. Even if they've got a blocker, they'll have to still block that. And your 4-0 still lives because of indestructible because of adamant. We have good old plummet, destroy target creature with flying. So no matter how big their creature is, as long as it's a flyer, you can plummet it. Then we've got a couple of ways to make your little creatures big. Titanic growth, two mana, give your creature plus four, plus four until end of turn instantly. So they might be blocking your little creature thinking, ah, I'll just take care of it, no problem. You can instantly titanic growth it and it's big. Or if you really want to make an impression, Colossification for seven mana, give your creature plus 20, plus 20. Although as soon as you cast this onto your creature, it taps it. So imagine you did attack with a relatively small creature, let's say, after the attack happens, then you pay for the Colossification and suddenly it's a 20-20. On taps on your next turn, you've got a huge creature. And I love this flavor text. It turns out the case of the flattened outpost and the case of the missing kitten were related. All right, let's do a little bit of gameplay and see how this deck might run. All right, so here's the deck. Let's play it. Let's see what good stuff we can get. I'll show you how to play this deck um, against a real opponent. All right, here we go. So the opponent has a Heliod deck. This is going to be very annoying. They're going to be able to summon that right away at turn three. It's indestructible. Have no way to get rid of that um, commander. A possible way would be if we had Shadow Spear in here, which turns off indestructibility. Then you have to bite it. It could be pretty complex in a mono green deck. We'll see how it goes. So they're going to have obviously a one drop. They're going to have like a one drop. Uh, healing Falcon, whatever that one's called, Healing Hawk. Watch, they're gonna have turn one mana creatures, turn two. They're gonna have a turn one lifelink creature, a turn two lifelink creature. They're gonna cast Heliod turn three. Things are gonna get out of hand. So Ram through is gonna be very useful, but the rest of this hand is horrific. Let's see if we can get a better hand here. This one's still not great. Um, they're gonna get in, they're gonna get their own creatures out faster than me at the moment. I have to wait until turn three for that. Well, what a miracle they didn't have a turn one lifelink creature. Okay, they're going to do some of that. Well, that's not horrible. Now, if this had naturalize, if this deck had naturalize, I'd be able to destroy that enchantment. Um, so, hey, that's another way. Uh, Shadow Spear to turn off indestructibility and then naturalize. Okay, so they're going to go this route. Um, they got their creature right away. Um, I can outmuscle to get rid of that. Kovala's coming next. Maybe outmuscle later. This would become only that. Let's see if they block that. Okay, they're gonna block that. Might as well get rid of their wall. Then what else? Grand Magoo is the opponent. So we just have to wait for that to get devotion for mana. That could be Faith's Fetters. Is that four mana or five? It's four mana, right? So Faith's Fetters could be in this deck. Pacify. Swift Response. That's annoying. That does remove my acceleration uh we can greater sandworm here bane slayer angel so cycle that six mana kogla and we get some of this so bane slayer angel is pretty cool but you know uh, a, ra a raging ape like that could also deal with that uh, angel and we get a banishing okay that's okay we'll just uh, keep recasting ourselves no big deal we're all about mana ramp right so i'm able to recast kogla next turn they have their heliod ability next turn we get kogla back so whatever creature they summon Kogla will swat down 
trapping me with that. Cannot, uh, cannot do that, okay. Fine, you probably should do it on like one of my real, one of my real abilities. Then we get there. Summon that again. They've got three cards in total. Nothing to do. If I can attack with Kogla, I will be able to destroy the trapped. If they don't have more removal. Oops, they're looking at it. So they've got a secure. Okay. I still get a 1-1, one, one, which then I can add Colossification. That'll be fun, right? Let's do some of that. They've given me, they've given me that 1-1. One, one. And um, let's see what happens here. I'm going to attack with that 1-1. One, one. And then if they do nothing about it, let's turn that into a 2020 and give a nice to ourselves. Is that is that valid? So that is a 2121. They still have three mana in total. Whatever they summon, I can then outmuscle or or Hunter's Edge. Okay, Glorious Anthem into an 8-8. Eight, eight. Speaker. Sure. They are going to do the pledge. That's a 10-10. Fun. Okay. And they have one mana in total. Okay, we get some of that. So let us outmuscle their only blocker which then loses Devotion, right? No, this still has Devotion, okay. And then we can pull out our Mana Dorks over here. Next turn, Kogla can swing in and destroy their, their Anthem or their whatever. Well, not yet, actually. Um, When, it, when Kogla attacks, it can do that. So we'll wait for that next turn. Um, oh yeah, reading the card explains the card. I should have selected not to attack. Um, whoops. Uh, I was thinking too far ahead that it wasn't thinking at the moment. Um, it fights up to one creature. Okay. So they have their own Shadow Spear right here. That's a 12-12. 13 13. They're gonna um, gain 13 life. Yeah, everyone, sorry, that was, I was totally out of it. I should have not chosen to. That Kogla, I should have noticed not to not to block. I shouldn't have chosen Kogla to attack. I wasn't paying attention. I for, I didn't realize Hilad was so big. So that's annoying. Well, anyway, I guess we'll do it right over here. Uh, we're gonna have a very hard time removing the. Um, the devotion. If we had naturalize in this deck, we could remove some of those things. Good old plummet. Gonna have to have Cola try to destroy some of the enchantments here. Well, Shadow Spear is not gonna cut it.
So they turned off their own indestructibility, eh? That's kind of interesting. So that's fun. They turned off indestructibility, but I became indestructible after the fact. So, uh, okay, I guess they felt I, I don't know what happened there. I was the one that was worried. You have an indestructible god. Um, I guess they would have thought I would have started to attack eventually with huge things, the 2222, Koga attacks, Koga attacks would have then destroyed the Knight's, what is this called again? The Knight's Pledge, and then would have lost devotion. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess they saw the writing on the wall. Um, so yeah, there you go. That was a possible game that um, was really back and forth with a huge mistake on my part, of course. I had Kogla attack without thinking, but again, I was just being a big dumb green critter, and it was like attack and kill and stomp, so uh, it worked out. So, yep, there's we go. That's the upgrade right there in um, just commons or artisan, uh, commons and uncommons, to the upgrades to the deck. And so there you go, that was the upgrade of this deck in Commons and Uncommons, a budget build. I hope you like the changes. I think it's a fun deck with these changes. It's a little better than before. This is a great starting product, but it's also a challenge for you, then, for you to upgrade and make it even better. And I hope you like the way that I've made the upgrade. Get the full deck list down in the description and get the more powerful big money upgrades the one with the rares and mythic rares in the description in the patreon go to the patreon for one dollar to unlock that to get an even more powerful deck i think it's worth it and i'd like to hear what you think what do you think about these upgrades how would you do the upgrades have you done the upgrades have you won with these upgrades tell me all about it in the comments below this has been vm campos and i'll see you in the arena